unlike the real band but it's not bad it's not bad i just i just picked that up a couple of minutes ago yeah uh sorry just like picked it up a couple of minutes ago yes it's uh, i don't even know who i am i'm, I'm either bobby g or uh, is it jay i i can't remember uh but we're totally um neurotestic uh it's, it's uh Eng england yeah uh, britain's entry for the 1981 winning entry for the 1981 eurovision song contest and there's not been too many of them <laughs> No, and uh, whichever one I am, here's the other one. Yeah, we couldn't afford the budget for uh, the the dancing girls. Uh, Cheryl Baker is too famous now, anyway. She's the only one that made it. The rest of us drifted off into obscurity. <laughs> Terrible, tragic. Never mind. Let's console ourselves with a pipe march called Pipe Major Willie Gray's farewell to the Glasgow City Police. <laughs>
totally poptastic there. What's the chances of finding a couple of two four marches in the middle of Eurovision anytime soon? Pretty pretty mini minuscule, I would imagine. Ah, oh, wonderful hairstyle. I'm just admiring it in the uh, the uh, reflection there of my phone, and it's uh, it's quite. It's quite, there's so many hairstyles from the 1970s, so many terrible hairstyles to copy, it's fabulous. I'll never, I'll never run out of them, pop pickers. Now, um, you may think that it's unusual for an accordion to end up in the Eurovision, or maybe not, but this very accordion, well, one very like it, did end up with this very play, almost in the Eurovision in 1997, yeah, way back in 1997. And uh, I, I was actually in the running for a song for Britain, which was spearheaded by the great Terry Wogan on his Radio 2 show on a Friday morning. And uh, for the lead up to the competition, we would play all the tracks that were going to the final. And we were one selected by the great British public, the one of the final four. And we went on to perform live on the lottery. Yes, that was my first taste of real success, live in the glory, when I met huge, huge personalities uh, like Dale Winton, uh, an immense, immensely tanned man, he's a very tall man actually, he's much bigger than me, oh, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, we, we performed and we did our best, we, we came second, we were only picked at the post by Katrina and the Waves, who went on to win the whole Eurovision that year with Shine, Shine a Light. In fact, she even mentioned us in a newspaper interview last week. She said, we faced some stiff competition from Yodel in the Canyon of Love. Yes, that was the name of our song, or our catchy title, Yodel in the Canyon of Love. Uh -huh. hmm. I don't know how we got, I don't know how we managed to get, to get that far with the name of that song. Anyway, it was written by Kenny MacDonald, the manager of the Proclaimers. And, uh, yeah, we all performed live in the lottery, and uh, my accordion broke in the flight down. I tried to fix it, just made it worse. And I uh, ended up using a BBC prop accordion from the cupboard. Same cupboard that Rothwell probably, probably found Emu in, uh, a disused BBC prop cupboard. And uh, it was unplayable, it just had this note stuck in going like that all the time. But I was just miming anyway, the singer was just was doing the real singing, but we were all just miming. Kenny MacDonald, who doesn't even play an instrument, was doing like this on the, key, on the keyboard. Another George MacDonald, uh, no relation, playing guitar, who co wrote the song. And me, going, uh, and here's my famous riff, which I get asked for all the time. Yeah, I can still do it. Yeah, still got it, still got it, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was my riff. Uh, you can see it on, on YouTube, just type in Yodel in the Canyon of Love. Uh, Kerry and Do Re Mi. I was Do. Do. <laughs> I never did find out which of the two other, Kenny, the two other McDonald's were, were Ray and me. I don't think they care. I, I was definitely dull. Dull. Uh, and uh, yeah, great song. Uh, in fact, oh my god, there's the single of it there. I forgot I had it on the, the shelf so that people can see what a huge pop star I was back in 97. That's the lovely Kerry, who's sadly no longer with us. Um, she died of, uh, of, of bladder cancer, which is a terrible thing, uh, about 10 years ago. I was at her funeral in West Lothian. She was a good West Lothian girl. I'm a West Lothian boy. I come from Kirkliston. and she came from West Calder. And uh, we both were thrown, thrust, thrust into the limelight. Well, she, she much more so. She was in, uh, was it the, uh, what's the, the pop competition? Uh, not The Voice, what they had before that. Uh, anyway, she was in one of these competitions and she, she did very well. Uh, but Dore me, yeah, there it is at the bottom. Do, that's me, Dore me. Featuring Kerry. And it was very exciting, but yes, nothing came of it. Nothing came of it. Uh, Katrina uh, and the waves went on for massive success, and here I am. Here I am, trying to make a living out of Facebook. <laughs> Never mind. There's worse things to be doing <laughs> than dressing up in wigs and uh, high heels. Right, boots of a Sunday morning. Oh, afternoon, it's morning for me. Uh, anyway, look at this. Look at the expense I went to for this show. I had to cut up one of my good shirts. That's been a, that's been one of my best shirts since primary school. I was a big child, uh, and it, yeah, I had to cut it with a pair of scissors today. But I might keep it for I don't know another. I might do another Rambo show or something. <laughs> Cover it in a bit of dark in that to the Rambo one again. I loved the Rambo one. That's great. It was about two years ago. I've done too many shows now. It's, it's ridiculous. By the way, I'm doing a, a live fringe show of this show. Um, I know a crazy idea. Five days. Uh, at the end of August in the Fringe Festival in the Saltar Society, which is just behind the World's End pub, kind of one of the closest 
the Royal Mail. Two o'clock in the afternoon, if you fancy it. And I'm just looking at the diary here. It's uh, oh, it's uh, the twenty second, twenty second to the twenty fifth. That's Tuesday to Friday, and then the very last day of the festival, which is the tw Monday the twenty eighth. Uh, if anybody's still around there. Anyway, it should be a good laugh. I'll try and do two or three random characters every day from from all the various shows I've done over the years. Anyway, back into character. So, um, what have we got next? Well, oh, uh, oh yes. I read a tune once, or Sandy Beacon did, called, my good friend Sandy Beacon wrote a tune once, called Euro Trash. Uh, and uh, how appropriate for the uh, Eurovision. Here it goes. <laughs> interesting comments coming up there on the screen. Uh, one from my good friend, my good old friend, and I mean old, he's 71. <laughs> he doesn't look at all, he looks younger than me. Uh, Bill Brownlee, aka The Badger. He has to go under, uh, he has to go online under his real name, Bill Brownlee, so he can remain incognito, because he's too famous uh, as The Badger. Everybody knows him. Honestly, you go anywhere in the country and Badger, well, he's usually there if I'm playing a gig, which is slightly weird and worrying, but also everybody in the, the whole town knows him, like. The bar staff, the B&B &B owners, the local policeman, the baker, the butcher, 
Weird. How does he do it? Anyway, Badger is saying there, um, who would have guessed when I wrote that tune many years ago that I would be one day playing it online dressed up in girly and a girly outfit? Well, Badger, this is not a girly outfit. I'm one of the guys. Look. The girls wear skirts which they whip off. Well, I would not be so, so base as to rely on a gimmick like that for my show. No. I am dressed as one of the guys. And this is the other guy. It's just, it's just nobody can remember their names. And uh, yes, Leslie Carey asking the same question. What are you up to today, Sandy? Well, what am, what am I up to? I'm up to the usual stuff I'm up to on Sunday. Absolute madness. Uh, oh, madness, I've not done that. I need to get pork, pork pie hat. You look like Olivia Newton-John. What's going on? Are you trying to say that I am some kind of cross-dresser? Not that there's anything wrong with that. Are you, what are you saying? I have a feminine face. I have a, I have a weak jawline. Um, do I automatically look like a woman as soon as I... <laughs> As soon as I put on a blonde wig and high-heeled boots. <laughs> I don't even have any fake breasts today. Look. Look, it's just my own moves. Oh, dear. Right. Oh, this is the trolling. The trolling I get in this show. Unbelievable. I don't know how I put up with it. Right. We better finish because <laughs> this is too much fun. And you, you're having too much fun as well. You're not allowed fun. Covid's over. Get back to real life. Shouldn't be watching this show anyway. Right, uh, what can I put for us? How about something cheery? Something cheery for a Sunday. Oh, speaking of cheery, I was doing a wonderful gig yesterday. It was, a, it was at Carlsberg did gigs. It was playing for a drink reception for a, a big posh wedding out in North Berwick. And, and it was right next to Tan Talon Casson. Tan Talon! Isn't that a fabulous name? Tan Talon! By the power of Tan Talon! Um, yeah, oh my god, it's a, it's a ruin like, but you know, it's still quite impressive on the cliff, overlooking the Bash Rock. Beautiful sunshine, what a day it was yesterday, what an ideal day for a wedding. Marquee, middle of a field, endless drinks. I, I was driving, so I had to have non-alcoholic beer, but it was very nice, what's it called? Free Dam, Free Dam, spelt with two M's. I don't know who makes it, but it was delicious. Uh, I'm quite into these non-alcoholic beers, actually. I've had, to, I've had to drink a few of them over the last few years. And I've been driving to gigs and it's they're wonderful, actually. And uh, anyway, I was just playing background music while they, they were chit-chatting and having canopies and champagne. And it was uh, absolutely delightful. Uh, I wasn't dressed like this, obviously. Uh, no, I was dressed like a tart, tart and tart, shortbread tin. But uh, that was nice as well. I like dressing up in old tartan. Uh, anyway, wonderful place. If you get a chance to go out there, North Berwick, Tantalan Castle. Well worth the visit. Right, I'm going to finish with a little reel. Uh, this is this is real, man. Keeping it real. Keeping it real for Eurovision. Oh, by the way, did you watch it last night? I didn't, but I heard the results. Sweden. Wow, Sweden won again. The same artist. God, I couldn't even I couldn't even get into it. Almost almost got into Eurovision. Never 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 ran. I'm a never ran. I'm a, I never. I'm, I'm not even a has been. I'm a never has been. <laughs> but uh, she she not only got into it, won it, and then won it again. I, some people are just so lucky. Right, I'm going to move to Sweden. Anyway, that's not a crazy idea because I've got friends in Sweden, you know. Yeah, yeah, I could, I could live on the rotting, the rotten herring. I could, I could do that. It's just, I'm not sure I could survive on the, on the drinks, ten pound pint. I'd have to go on to the low alcohol beer. It's probably just as much over there. Isn't it? Ah, well, I'll be seeing, seeing my Swedish friends next week at my good friends Kenny and Linda's wedding in Fort Augustus on. Um, Saturday night. In fact, there's a crazy amount of weddings going on next week. I'm playing at two of them. On Friday night, I'm playing at uh, other friends, Michael and Rachel's wedding. They got married about five years ago. It was slightly late for the party, but they decided to have a party on Friday night. That's down in Dumfries and Galloway. In the meantime, uh, the next afternoon, uh, good friends Gavin Marwick and Ruth Morris are getting married, finally, having, having widened in together. <gasps> for goodness knows, 20 years now. 15 years maybe, and uh, they're finally tying the knot in in the field in their, outside their house in Dumfries and Galloway. And uh, I'm going to try and make a flying visit to that and then go up to Fort Augustus for the, the third wedding in 24 hours of friends. So, God, what is it about that weekend? Is it must be, must be spring. Spring. Everybody wants to get married in the spring. Uh, lovely anyway. It's going to be a cracking weekend. Uh, so, what, what will I finish with? Uh, I feel a Eurovision song coming up, feeling very creative. <laughs> that is just bizarre. Um, here we go. 
Unplanned. Ah, beautiful. Enjoy your Eurovision weekend, everybody. Goodbye. Well, that was a super whatever your name is, fellow bandmates. I think it's time that we should relive the glory of Eurovision and dance around. <laughs> Oh yes, we were marvellous. Why is Britain not one for so long? Hello, neighbours! Oh god, I left that on again. 